Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to uh, show you how to draw what's called an impulse momentum diagram. So first of all, let me talk about when we can use it. Uh, you know, you can use in the concepts of impulse and momentum pretty much any time you're interested in relationships between force, velocity, and time. And the most typical examples, usually you're looking at impacts, but again, there's other, you know, we don't, they don't have to be impacts. There's other uh, examples where we do this. And impulse momentum works like this. When you know the initial momentum of a system, I'm going to call that mv sub o, and then you add your impulse, which um, can be written integral f dt, you get your final momentum, mv final. Now, in a college physics class, you know, I typically would write this maybe plus F delta T because in most examples we look at uh, that are relevant here, the force would be constant. But in general, this force is not constant, so this impulse typically is written in uh, integral form. All right. So the way you write an impulse momentum diagram is this. You basically have a picture for all three parts of this equation. All right, the first part. So here I have an object here. I'm going to call this uh, time one. This object presumably is moving in some direction. Maybe it's uh, this way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a vector. Now let's just talk about its velocity vector. Maybe I call this v1. Well, that's not a momentum. Right? The difference between velocity and momentum, they just differ by this factor of mass. So what I'm going to do here is just put an m in front of it. So mv1 would give me the momentum vector uh, in picture one. That can be any, you know, that can be in any dimension in 3D. Now, imagine between picture one and two, there's some forces acting on this object. Right? So to draw the impulse part, start with a free body. You know, maybe we've got a force vector acting this way, which I'll call F1. Maybe there's another one this way, which I'll call F2. Maybe we got a third one acting kind of like this, which I'll call F3. So here's a potential free body. And maybe there's a gravitational force. Maybe there's not, not relevant. Just imagine these being general forces. They could be anything. The difference between force and impulse is just the time factor. So if you tack on a time to these, I'll just tack on a dt, dt, dt. Now they're impulses. Right? acting over an infinitely small time. Now, if I want these acting over you know, an actual measurable time frame, right? then I'll just put integral symbols over these. So the difference between an impulse picture and a free body is just the time factor. Right? If these forces were constant, this would just be F1 delta T, F2 delta T. F3 delta T. Uh, but, but again, in general, the forces may not be constant. So the um, um, most generic way to write the impulse would be integral F dt. And by the way, remember, these are all vector quantities. Impulse is a vector. All right. Then we draw our final momentum vector. So maybe, you know, looking at this initial momentum and looking at the direction of these impulses, maybe my final momentum is pointing something like this. Mv2. And again, it's a vector quantity. So to draw an impulse momentum diagram, you just start with uh, drawing a vector. You know, you draw your object, put a, put a momentum vector on it. <laughs> Basically, you look at the velocity, draw a vector in the direction of the velocity, tack on a mass. Now it's a momentum vector. Then you draw a picture showing all the impulses that are acting on this. Start with just a free body diagram. Put all the forces that you can see acting on that object. Tack on times. Now they're impulses. Now when I say tack on times, if the forces are constant, it's good enough to just say like F delta T. If the forces are not constant, then write it F integral F dt. And again, remember these are vector quantities. All right. Then position two. Uh, draw your velocity vector. Tack a mass on. Now it's a momentum. All right. So that's a little bit about how to uh, draw an impulse momentum diagram. Uh, I think I'm going to um, save how to use it, how to write equations for another video. Have a great day.